All right, everyone, welcome back to another segment of Phantom Edge. I have a very special guest today who's no stranger to the Phantom ecosystem, Phantom team, uh, to talk about the latest and greatest. It's obviously been a really big week regarding Phantom and Sonic, so I have none other than Bernard Schultz. Bernard, how are you doing? Thanks, Luis. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's an honor, and I'm super excited to kind of dive in to some of the technicalities of what the sonic uh brings to the ecosystem so uh let, let's let's begin um i mean i mean i think it's the best to kind of start off by explaining sonic's new technological stack can, can you walk us through that sure Lewis. so we were very busy the last one one half years uh trying to set up a new engineering team and the idea there was to really revamp the technological stack of Phantom, making it the fastest chain out there, which is EVM compatible. And, and this was quite an engineering challenge. So we had to really go very deep into the mechanics of um, uh, Phantom's technological stack. And it started really with measuring uh, what is going on. So we applied a technique which we call performance engineering. And the idea here is really that we measure each component individually and we uh, build test beds. We basically put probes into these components, understand how they are performing. We do a very thorough analysis and then we rewrite these components and uh, one of these big challenges we had was that uh, one of the components of uh, the phantom stack is called block processing and block processing is really about executing uh, transactions so it's really um, is about moving one world state, which contains balances, uh, nonces, and um, codes of accounts uh, forward to the next world state by transaction. Mm -hmm. And this block processing um, was too slow. It was uh, initially taken from the Go Ethereum uh, stack and was adapted for Phantom. But we realized very quickly that we need to really redesign it. And there are several sub modules in this block processing. And um, one is um, the database, which really contains all the world state, all this data needed. Um, then another one is the uh, virtual machine. So we have had to rewrite the virtual machine. Um, it's now the phantom virtual machine. And uh, the last bit here, uh, which is outside of uh, the block processing component, is more related to the consensus component. Uh, this is uh, the um, transaction pool, which was simply too slow. And we had to do major changes in the transaction pool to make things really, really fast. So it was really a concerted effort between the engineers and the researchers of our company, and it was executed beautifully, delivering amazing results. Yeah, and that that said, just congratulations again to to the whole team, right? Uh, to the whole research team, development team, to kind of make it happen this week. So um, that said, I know you mentioned obviously the last year year and you know and a half has been focused on this so can you talk a little bit about and share with us like the technical advancements of the fvm what that brings to the space compared to the evm you just mentioned so so the phantom virtual machine is really a radical new design in the virtual machine landscape of uh, blockchains so instead of um, having a fairly simplistic virtual machine we had to do quite a bit of innovation to improve the execution speed. We have been experimenting with different techniques and uh, the solution we chose was really a solution which uh, sort of required the implementation of a new virtual machine with a different encoding. So it is our system is EVM compatible, but if you look under the hood, a different virtual machine with a different instruction set 
does the operation and um, how it's done is really that we use uh, dynamic translation. So it's sort of a technique which then translates the EVM compatible bytecode. So smart contracts normally are translated to EVM um, compat uh, EVM bytecode. This is how it works in the in an EVM compatible blockchain. And um, these, this EVM bytecode is translated in the uh, client, in the system which runs the blockchain on the fly to this new virtual machine, to this phantom virtual machine. And this new encoding is um, very uh, amenable to fast execution. So this new encoding helped us to really improve the execution of um, um, smart contracts and it has several innovations um, you know beside the encoding uh, which allows super instructions um, we have innovations uh, related to cryptographic hashes so a lot of these um, data blocks need signatures in smart contracts and these signature calculations are quite intensive. And what we observed is that um, there is a repetition of these calculations. And instead of recalculating the same result, we cache these results of cryptographic operations. And with this caching, we really get a significant speed up. Another thing is related to something called jump test analysis. So this is an analysis which the EVM executes to find out whether um, jump instructions find legit um, jump destinations. It's sort of a security feature of the EVM. Unfortunately, it takes time to analyze. And the idea of the phantom virtual machine is to cache these results in a very clever way in form of the encoding. And with that, we save quite a bit of runtime. Um, so this, um, one of the features which is enabled, but will be hopefully used um, from next year onward are super instructions. So bundles of instructions can be amalgamated to a new super instruction. And with that, we can further boost uh, the uh, Phantom virtual machine. At the moment, it's not enabled for the first release, but next year we will ramp up the performance even further absolutely uh, another another sector that has had a significant update as well has been the storage database can, can you explain like the working of Carmen and you know break it down for us so this this was really one of the core and key components related to the execution of smart contracts early findings in our uh, performance analysis showed that uh, storage is key for performance. So we need super fast um, database to store the world state, to store basically the balance list of accounts, to store um, uh, the persistent storage of smart contracts. And we needed really very innovative solutions to really bring up that speed. It has been a very long quest. So we have been implementing five different versions of this database. Uh, the one we are currently showcasing in Sonic is the schema number three. So it's really a sort of a, a sort of a, a journey for us finding the best possible database implementation and the best possible designs. Uh, this schema three is really of interest because it has a fundamental new approach for storing the world state. So it's a, an approach which um, allows us to uh, go away from a more tree or tri based data structure. And it has quite a bit of innovation how to get two fundamental operations working. So uh, the first operation we need is getting a signature for a world state, getting a signature what um, is the balances of all accounts in a given block or state related to a block. And 
uh, that that is very important for the security. The other operation, which is sort of quite unique in uh, this blockchain world, is um, I would call it data versioning, or that's more the database jargon. Here, what it means is that we have like a time machine where we can go mm -hmm. back in time and query a certain state in the past um, for a given block number. And this data versioning or this time machine has also very specific requirements when it comes to the design and implementation. The solution we came up with is really um, um, the uh, solution of specializing the database. So we have at the end two different databases mm -hmm. One which is used by the validators and just keeps the current world state, whereas another database um, keeps the historical data. So we, we perform here really a paradigm of performance engineering where we start specializing um, uh, these kind of um, databases. So one we call the LifeDB. This is the one which is used by uh, the validator. And the other one, which keeps the historical state, we call archive to be, and they have very different access patterns and usages, so that with the specialization, we can really cope with uh, what is going on, um, and um, we can really deliver superior performance uh, than to traditional approaches where there's only a single data structure, a single format serving uh, validators and archive nodes. Absolutely. So obviously so far we've talked about obviously Sonic's new uh, tech stack, uh, kind of what the FVM brings compared to the EVM. Uh, you just explained to us, um, Carmen, uh, schema three, as you mentioned, right? Um, now, can you explain to us a little bit and outline the improvements of uh, Lachesis, the consensus mechanism? So we did not really change um, the consensus machinery per se, but there is a lot of um, sort of modules under it. So there are modules related to talking between nodes. So we call this a peer-to-peer -peer network. Mm -hmm. uh, other modules um, are related to pooling transactions. So it's called the transaction pool. And you can imagine this is similar like queuing, people queuing for a bus. Uh, in that case, the people are the transactions and the bus is the block which uh, should take these transactions. And um, the transaction pool, how we used it in the previous GoOpera client was suboptimal. It served very well the purpose for the previous client for GoOpera. But for Go Sonic, we need now an optimized transaction pool. Uh, this is really related to this um, very high transaction throughput. We have now um, uh, transaction throughput in around 2,000 uh, transactions per second. And with that, we really have much different demands and requirements when it comes to the Lachesis consensus protocol. So this is really just the start. There will be many more changes in the consensus, in the transaction pool, and in the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, network. But uh, this will happen in the next year. This is really just the beginning, and we really want to go to the limits of what is achievable with the current um, design where we don't want to engage in techniques like sharding and um, yeah. other sort of horizontal scaling techniques. So we, our approach is uh, we want to achieve with performance engineering uh, as much performance as possible with the current architecture. And, and when we hit the limits, when we hit the wall with uh, the current sort of um, non-sharding classical approach of running a um, permissionless chain, then we will flip and that that is our approach at least for the next year. Now regarding um, dApps right now that 
obviously it's testnet still, but as it gets developed, Sonic, can you explain to us how like current dApps um, can have a successful and smooth transition from the EVM to now the FVM? So these are really good news because our current technology will not um, change the user experience or the dev experience deploying the apps on our chain. So whatever worked before should work in future. Um, these are currently test nets. So we want to appreciate, I mean, we appreciate if uh, the apps developers deploy their apps and test the speed and um, enjoy the transaction throughput. Uh, but um, the idea here again is um, after we have uh, completed the test phase of the test net, that we will have a fully compatible blockchain uh, with GoSonic. So whatever worked in um, Go Opera should work in GoSonic in future. Yeah, it's super easy, right? Uh, I think DApps would like the sound of that. Um, now, obviously, a big a big uh, point of attraction, if you will, uh, with Sonic is obviously uh, transaction throughput and uh, uh, finality, right? How how does Sonic improve transaction throughput and time to finality? And also, can you share with us some benchmark metrics you have gathered and the current available demos that you guys kind of uh, performed? Well, we really wanted to uh, break tradition in the blockchain world by not just boasting about numbers which are not real. So we didn't want to say our blockchain can do 300,000 transactions or whatever numbers uh, people throw around. We wanted to make these um, numbers tangible. We wanted to ensure that the community can really feel and see these numbers. So with said this, what we did was really be set up two um, test nets, two test nets, and for a very good reason. So one, we call it a closed test net. And the idea of the closed test net is to drive the network, which is sort of mimics um, the, um, the workload, the validators from the mainnet. And the, we have a blog. You can find more information there, how, how it's done. I think we don't have the time to go much into detail. Mm -hmm. But this closed test net, the purpose of this closed test net is to find out what is the maximum performance. Mm -hmm. And this is quite a unique approach, finding out maximum performance. Um, this is done via a transaction feeder. And the transaction feeder feeds into the network um, as many transactions as possible, but it has a feedback loop. So the feedback loop senses uh, how many transactions have been processed and it stalls a little bit or throttles down the transaction feeder if it uh, notices the network that um, it can't process as much as the uh, feeder really feeds into it. So there is a feedback loop. And with that feedback loop, we can really uh, test out what is the maximum performance and in a very stable way. So you can really watch this on the dashboard. So we have a dashboard. Please have a look. Um, we can provide the links to this. We can add this to the podcast later. And with these links, you can really uh, see how the transaction feeder, which consists basically of um, a, a set of smart contracts, which are fired off continuously um, into this test network. And um, you can see then it's a very stable um, transaction per second um, time to finality. And um, the other metric, which is important, maybe not for the end user of blockchains, but for the people who are running uh, validators, archive nodes, the other very important metric is the disk consumption. Mm -hmm. 
And when you look up the closed test net, you will see that uh, we can consistently achieve uh, above 2000 transactions per second. We have a time to finality. So this is really the time from injecting a, a transaction to the time when it settles on the block. Um, if this time is uh, around one second and the disconsumption, depending on the database, I was mentioning before there is a historical database and uh, mm -hmm. there is a, uh, we call it archive DB and there's a live DB, which contains only the current state. Um, these numbers are also amazing. So if you have the world state in an historical uh, database in an archive DB uh, with the old technology, it takes roughly 11 terabyte and a sort of similar setup in uh, the new technology requires roughly one terabyte. So there are big storage uh, yeah. reductions going on with the new technology, which really helps the economics of the blockchain. So long-term running validators will be substantially cheaper uh, than what we have at the moment. So this is the closed test network. And we have also an open test network. And the open test network is really to um, interact with the new technology. So people can really deploy in the very standard fashion their um, smart contracts. We have an underlying transaction feeder uh, sort of showing activity. So this is around 100, 130 transactions per second of continuous workload showing that, you know, even with a um, continuous workload, there is sustained performance. Um, and um, because of the lower transaction per second throughput, we achieve even a better time to finality. So there is at the end of the day, a connection between the transaction per seconds and the time to finality. And you see it in the open test network that the open test network has a much lower time to finality. So this is much better. Mm. But the reason here is really that it has a lower transaction per second throughput. Um, we don't have as many transactions there as in the um, closed network. By the way, we couldn't open the closed network. There, there is no space for other transactions. This is really the network at its limits. We can't process the uh, public transactions. That That's not possible. Just to summarize, the benchmarks are really amazing. We put ourselves at, on the top of the list with this new um, technology, and we are very different to other blockchains. We don't write just numbers on papers. We really show demos, show in the demos what is achievable with this new technology. Well, Bernard, I think uh, it's safe to say that uh, there's a lot of excitement. There's going to be lots of excitement moving forward after this, right? And again, another big week. So uh, I want to thank you once again for joining me today and kind of just walking us through what this looks like uh, from the inside, right? And what this means at the grand uh, scheme of things. So uh, thank you so much, Bernard, for for sharing that time. And on behalf of everyone here too, you know, um, grateful for the research and development team. Uh, like you said, uh, you have a whole team out there doing doing all this hard work. So um, thank you so much, Bernard. Yeah. Thanks so much. I wanted just to mention this is really a team effort. It was not me. It was the whole team of engineers and. Uh, researchers, which really, and, and the support of the management, uh, which really made this happen. It, it was not uh, my individual effort. It was an amazing team effort and the whole team worked like clockwork. So it was an amazing experience for me and everyone uh, involved. And you can really feel the excitement uh, and the energy in the company now seeing this new technology really coming to fruition at the end. Absolutely. There's so much fuel uh, from this. Uh, like you mentioned, the company's fired up, community's fired up. So I, I look forward to speaking to you in the future, Bernard, to see uh, any more advancements specifically around metrics, anything that you guys are observing and things like that. So once again, thank you so much. And we'll talk soon, Bernard. Thanks so much, Luis. Bye-bye.